This is the type of microcontroller we'll be using for the club. Uh, I chose this microcontroller because it's easy for beginners to use while being capable of doing some pretty cool things with electronics and robotics. Throughout this video, I'll show you some of the functionalities of this microcontroller as well as how to use a breadboard with the Arduino. Uh, let's first start with looking at the microcontroller a little bit closer. Uh, this is the actual microcontroller on the Arduino right here. This is where your sketches are compiled to when you upload your code. If you wanted, you could actually take this microcontroller out of the board and use it uh, in a circuit if you have it hooked up properly. So why even have it on the board? Well, the board makes your life a whole lot easier by wrapping up everything you would need to send the microcontroller, um, your sketch, and also providing you with the uh, input and output pins um, and power as well. Uh, there's also a built-in resistor and LED on pin 13 that you can use that acts exactly like um, an LED if you had an LED on pin 13. The board's maximum voltage it can output is 5. Because the board cannot fluctuate between 0 and 5 volts, there are pulse width modulation pins here. There's six of them. Um, that can be used to turn the voltages on and off at certain increments to make it seem as though you can vary between the voltages. Um, here is what the pulse width modulation looks like at different increments when you use the function analog write in your Arduino software. The Arduino um, is also able to remember the last code that you wrote on it. Uh, when you turn off the power. This is useful if you want to hook up your Arduino to a battery with the power jack um, mounted on the board and, and have your board working somewhere other than next to your computer which is supplying the voltage through here. So this is what a breadboard looks like. Um, the vertical strips have a copper um, strip running underneath it and so does this one and the holes in the middle have a copper strip running horizontally so if I let's see where is it here if I had a battery that I wanted to hook up to this breadboard, I would first supply um, the voltage to the board down these strips. Um, the black is ground, so ground is going through all of these, and then the five volt, or in this case, I guess it would be um, three volts, is going through this red strip down here. Um, if you notice I had it on opposite sides of the board so if I wanted to run through both strips I could just cross these wires like like this so now I have power running through both of these strips um, so let's say if I wanted to light up an LED you can see that the LEDs connections are being made right here and right here now when you look at an LED um, you'll notice that one lead is longer than the other that's because that is called the anode and you always want to put electricity into the anode first so I'll put it right here and then ground is made with the cathode so you put the short end and connect it to ground and so now I have power running through my LED so that pretty much wraps it up for this tutorial the next tutorial will actually involve uh, some sketches and some functions uh, that you can use uh, to actually power a light on or off or a motor um, 
So I'll see you in the next tutorial.